Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Get Wedding Ready with me, Wara Monola. I hope you're well, I hope you're keeping safe. Today is a very, very interesting video. I've seen a lot of you ask so many questions. I've got engaged, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to plan, I don't know what to do. And I thought to put this video together for anyone who's planning a wedding out there. So as the title says, yes, today is going to be how to plan a wedding. I am going to give you the tools, the resources, the info, the behind the scenes. I'm gonna give you all the real tea about how to plan a wedding. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to know what to expect when it comes to weddings, what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it, and what plan a wedding looks like so that you can make the right decision. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Before we go straight into it, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 10,000. I can touch it, I can feel it. We're almost there, so please subscribe. Yes, let's get straight into this video. The first thing I wanna talk about on how to plan a wedding, I'm gonna give 10 different, I don't know if call them tips or advice, but the first thing is you have to envision your wedding. You have to envision what kind of wedding you want to have. Anytime you're starting a new year, starting a new project, whatever you're doing, you have a vision. You write things down. You make a plan. You have a mood board. It's the same thing with your wedding. You have to vision and think about the kind of wedding you want to have. Is it a big wedding? Is it a small wedding? Is it a destination wedding? Is it a rustic wedding? Is it a micro wedding? You have to write this down so that you have an idea of how, because your vision for your wedding is literally the umbrella in which everything comes together to make your wedding work. The very basics is how many people, where you want to have the wedding, when you want to have the wedding, what the wedding is going to look like, how luxurious or how downplayed. So have a vision of what you want your wedding to look like. The next thing about how to plan a wedding is your wedding dates. Now, whenever you're planning anything, the date is literally one of the first things you have to lock down because without a date, you can't really start planning. Without a wedding date, you can't secure any vendors because you need a date to secure vendors. So you have to secure a date first and then you know you start planning the wedding so when you go to Venice you're like I'm getting married on 18th of December but when you don't have a date you can't really start planning anything and a tip I want to give you on your wedding date when you're planning a wedding is you have to be aware of holidays for example you have to make sure that your wedding doesn't fall on certain holidays that people want to spend with their family like Thanksgiving Christmas Easter etc next thing is different seasons so depending on where you get married especially if it's a destination you have to be mindful of the different seasons if you're getting married in a more tropical place be mindful of like the rainy season and when it's dry if you're getting married in a place like Dubai be mindful of the on season slash the off seasons you need to be aware of peak periods peak periods are usually expensive when it comes to weddings and summer is a peak period for weddings spring and summer is a peak period for weddings in a lot of places especially like in England but you have to be aware of this peak period because that would dictate how expensive things get you know because of the peak period and another thing is day of the week usually for venues Monday to Wednesdays are usually really cheap whereas Thursdays to Sunday Sundays you'll find are the more expensive packages, especially Saturday. Honestly, you could literally double the price of hiring a venue if you get married on Tuesday versus getting married on a Saturday. The next part of this is having a budget. Your budget dictates how your wedding is going to be like. So it's so important for you to have a budget because your budget detects what kind of wedding you're going to have as well. The higher the budget, the more luxurious your wedding is going to be. The lower the budget, the more DIY and toned down and simple things are going to be for your wedding. But hey, we can work around that. But it's so important to have a budget and keep Keyword: your budget has to be realistic. I say this in all my videos. What is a realistic budget? A realistic budget is one, a budget that reflects how much the wedding actually costs. So when you put together all what you want for your wedding, your vendors, your venue, your catering, your dance floor, and everything you want for your wedding, like the vision, the vision I talked about. When you put all the costs together for that vision, you have a figure on what that actually looks like. Then make sure you can afford this. So if your vision is coming up to 40,000 pounds, that is realistically what your vision, that wedding can cost, right? If you can afford that, then that's great. You go ahead and easy peasy. If you can't afford that, it doesn't become a realistic budget for you. You have to come to the terms with, you know what, we might need to tone down our expectations. So a realistic budget, first of all, you have to be able to afford the budget and second, it must mirror the actual cost of these items. People go into wedding planning and they start finding out that things are more expensive than they thought because their budget was not realistic. So make sure your budget is is realistic. Next part of how to plan a wedding is to get a wedding planner. First of all, wedding planning can be overwhelming, can be stressful. There's a lot of people to manage and you're probably doing it alongside 
your job and possibly a business or something that you're interested in. So it's so important for you to think about your workload, how much you have to do and think, can I really plan this wedding? Apart from that, a wedding planner has trained in this field. They know what works, what doesn't work. They know the vendors to go to, when you give them the vision, they know how to execute it. You don't know how to do that. So you're literally gonna be trialing and you know, just trying at your wedding. So I would advise you when you're planning a wedding to get a wedding planner who can put this wedding together. If by all means you want to plan your wedding yourself and you probably want to go into the industry, that's fine. But make sure you get a wedding coordinator. Wedding coordinator, most planners are coordinators and a coordinator is someone who runs the day and puts the day together. Because if you plan your wedding, who's gonna make sure it all comes together? Who's gonna make sure everyone arrives on time? Your wedding is set up, everything is going on schedule. You can't do that from, you know, the wedding stage or the sweetheart table you're sitting on. You have to get a professional to do that. So yes, get a planner. And speaking of planner, I'm a wedding planner. Hit me up at wura at manalalux.com. My website is www.manalalux.com and on Instagram is manalalux weddings and I would be able to help you. Even if you're not in the same country as I am, I offer virtual wedding packages. So if you want someone to help you look for venues or vendors or look over contract or create a wedding checklist or a timeline, then I can offer those services for you if you don't need a full planning service. But if you need a wedding planner and coordinator, definitely hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. So the next thing you want to consider when planning a wedding is your venue. The venue is one of the most important elements of wedding planning. And there's so many factors to consider when choosing your venue. The first thing is you need to consider the size. Can the venue host the amount of guests you're looking at hosting? You need to think about proximity, where you're having your ceremony or where you're staying in the hotel or where your guests are or where in the city you are. Is it close enough and is it easy to get to? You need to consider that. The next thing you need to consider is the layout of the venue. Other thing you need to consider are things like outside catering. For example, if you already have a caterer you want to work with, you need to make sure that your venue allows outside catering. The next thing you need to consider when it comes to venue is is, is the venue dry hire or is it all inclusive? Dry hire means the venue comes bare as it is and you have to bring in everything. So you have to bring in your chairs, your tables, your crockery, your linen, every single thing you have to bring in. Yes, some venues are like that. So you need to consider that. When it comes to decor as well, you need to consider how flexible your venue is. Do they allow you to hang like a chandelier from the ceiling or go wild with your decor? You need to consider that as well. And of course, you need to consider the price of the venue. So how much does the venue cost? Amongst other things, which obviously is a long list, but those, those are like the main things you need to consider when you're looking for your wedding venue. And also the best place to look for venues, I like to use Cvent, which is a good software you put in anywhere in the world you are, how many guests, what you need, and boom, it just shows you a list of venues. It literally has the pictures, the capacity, the floor plan. It's like one of the best softwares that I love using. Another thing is Google. Go to Google and research the venues around you or the venues in the destination that you're planning to go to. So those are two tips that I can give you. Again, if you're looking for venues and it's really, really hard for you and you need help looking for venues, don't forget to hit me up again. We're at manalalux.com. Everything will be listed on the screen and down below. The next thing about how to plan a wedding is the tools and resources you need to plan a wedding. If you're not a wedding planner, please get a pen and get a paper at this bit because you're really going to need it. The first tool you need is social media. You have your Pinterest that I talked about earlier on where you have your inspiration, anything you want is on Pinterest. Color themes, dresses, shoes, anything literally that you want to plan a wedding is on Pinterest. Next thing is Instagram. Instagram is a perfect place to find your wedding vendors. Using hashtags and following blogs and following myself, Ram Manola and Manola Lux Weddings, you get to see an array of vendors. You get to see their work, you see comments, you see videos, you see behind the scenes. It's just perfect insight into your vendors. And the next two is speaking to people who've actually gotten married. You find that former brides have a lot of advice because they've already gone through it. They can advise you on the photographer, makeup artist. They can actually tell you what worked and what didn't work. So if you have people that have already gotten married, speak to them, see what their experience was and also you can get vendors. I know brides have gotten vendors from each other's wedding, you know, like photographers, you know, bridesmaids, dressmakers, just by, you know, asking, oh, where did you get that? I love this. So yes, speak to former brides. The next tool you need to plan a wedding is having a wedding checklist. The wedding checklist is a spreadsheet or rather a document that allows you to track your wedding from beginning to end. So your wedding checklist has every single thing from 12 months or whenever your countdown starts to the day of your wedding. So it's so important for you to have that so that nothing gets 
missed out. The last thing you want to do is not have a knife to cut your cake or forget to pack your second dress, for example, or pay a vendor or book a vendor or, you know, send important details to a vendor. So a checklist puts you on track when planning a wedding. So important to have that. If you need a checklist, I'm creating one, almost done. So please, there's going to be a link below for you to register interest for that checklist and it will be available once it's done. The next thing is your reminder, set your calendar reminder, set your alarms. Yeah, it's that deep, set your alarms. <laughs> so yeah, set your calendar reminders for vendors. Like if you need to pay vendors, if you have a site visit, like to visit a venue, or if you have an appointment or a consultation with a vendor, or perhaps a meeting with your wedding planner, make sure you have the reminder so that you don't forget to pay someone because that person is not gonna come to your wedding. So yes, make sure you have your reminders. The next thing is having a wedding folder to put all your, you know, contracts, everything that, you know, you use for your wedding. So you can put that in your wedding folder and you don't have to start looking for, oh, where's this contract or what does this say? Or, you know, you have it all in one place. And coming on back of that is a wedding email. It's so important for you to have a wedding email so that you can have your inquiries from guests or your RSVPs or your vendor emails and everything in one place rather than sharing, you know, your wedding activities with your regular email that gets bogged up with a lot of things so yes get a wedding email and last part of tools and resources is your wedding website it's so important to have a wedding website to have more information so that if guests are asking you questions they have somewhere to go you can have your registry on your wedding website so people can you know gifts for your wedding you can have you know anything linked to your venue some resources for getting to your venue like taxis flight information there's so much you can use for your website where people have all the information they need for your wedding and if you're having a activities during your wedding put that on your website as well rather than sending information every time you just have it on your website and you can direct people the next part about how to plan a wedding is your guests yes you have to put together a guest list you have to know who you're going to invite to your wedding and you're going to have to manage all of that so with your guests you need a spreadsheet where you have all your guest information you need their names their surnames their numbers in case you need to call someone and find out if they're still coming to your wedding because you haven't heard from them um, you need their wedding email in case you want to send important relevant information you need their address in case you're posting out your wedding invites so you definitely need all of that also have different tabs on that spreadsheet for different people so have your guests have your fiance's guests have your mom's guests your dad's guests and also your fiance's mom and dad's guests so that if there's any mix up or if someone needs something or someone isn't coming you already know who's guest that is another thing is don't forget to put dietary requirements because obviously you want to make sure that if there are any allergies intolerances or anything that is written in there but coming to the end guys three more things and we're done the next part about how to plan a wedding is your dream team and that is your vendors your vendors make or break your wedding so you have to choose your vendors carefully choose vendors that have experience that have a good portfolio choose vendors that you can see yourself working with ask them questions you know what kind of weddings do they do how many weddings do they do what does their team look like you know make sure you're choosing the right vendors ask around you know people who've used the vendors how was it like to work with this vendor because let me tell you your vendors can make or break your wedding and you want to make sure you choose them wisely also make sure all your vendors give you contracts terms and conditions if you need to postpone your wedding or if you're canceling your wedding or if anything is going to happen what what does that look like make sure that is all in your contract again get payment terms invoices and all that good stuff that you're already going to get so yeah that's all the bits about vendors i'm gonna have a video i'm coming out soon about questions you need to ask your vendors which i feel is super important so yeah choosing the right vendor is super important and follow blogs like bella ninja weddings Ora Manola, myself, Love Weddings, NG, Brides. There's so many blogs out there that feature so many vendors so the more blogs you follow the more vendors you see your wedding needs colors and your wedding colors are going to go through everything through your decor your stationery your traditional attire if you're going to have traditional attire your invites your colors your bridesmaids dresses the um ties or pocket squares that your groomsmen wear your bouquet the colors are so important for your wedding and that's part of the theme of your wedding also if you want to proper have a theme you can have like you know a gutsy themed wedding which is like really 1950s a lot of black a lot of gold oh so chic or you can have like a country wedding or rustic vibes or rustic wedding or green wedding so there's so many themes you can play with and your theme really comes through in you know the decor and every element of your wedding so yes make sure you have a wedding theme and just google theme ideas go to pinterest pinterest have loads of themes and themes could be colors they could be eras they could be movie based the last part on how to plan a wedding is whenever you're planning anything you need a plan b a plan c a plan d <laughs>
but whenever you're planning anything you need a plan b because nothing goes 100 percent as planned we're human things are bound to happen so you need to make sure you have a backup plan if it was going to rain make sure if your wedding is outside you can you know you factor in a marquee or something that they could put up if for any reason there's you know flood or anything's happening in the country you're getting married have a backup plan on how you can bring that wedding to your home country or move it to another sister property in the destination for example in this period i'm filming this video is 2021 and we're still in the pandemic this is where you need to have plan b's what does a backup guest list look like what does a backup plan look like what does a backup budget look like so it's so important for you to have a plan b so that you are covered and the bonus part that i want to talk about is your mindset and your perspective wedding planning can be stressful overwhelming consuming there can be loads of arguments fights bickering loads of family members you know sticking their noses wedding planning can get ugly people say you see your true friends you know when it comes to wedding planning but once you get a wedding planner that is an element that can really help you you know when someone else is planning the wedding you just take the burden off you and you can go about your life and all you need to tell them is do this do this do that you know and also your mindset you need to go into this with a positive mindset and just tell yourself that nothing is going to shake you nothing's going to phase you you know and you're going to plan this wedding it's going to be a beautiful wedding make sure you and your partner are on the same page make sure that you expectations are set with your family and your fiance make sure everyone goes into it understanding what to do what not to do and boundaries are set so it's so important for all of this to be uh, you know introduced into your wedding planning a lot of people forget this part they go straight into vendor booking cake and everything and it's like you need to lay the foundations so watch my video on just engage what to do next i really really go into what you need to start doing before you start wedding planning like the important things to lay the foundation for your wedding planning so check that video out and perspective always have perspective the most important thing is your marriage the union between you and your partner don't lose sight of that you know it allows you to be flexible to not let anything get to you and you know to have good vibes so yes that's all i wanted to say thank you so much for coming by this video i hope it's been really helpful and giving you an overview on how to plan a wedding again it's impossible to put how to plan a wedding in one video because people study this so i already have videos on different elements so go check my channel but again if you need a wedding planner please hit me up we're at manalux.com manalux wedding on instagram and www.manalux.com and i'd love to hear from you so yeah hit me up all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you on my next video bye